Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm so excited to have a 25 year old Kiwi with me. Kiki. Hi, Kiki. Nice to have you. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Yeah. So she just, I brought her on because I thought this would be interesting to the audience. She is a, a New Zealander who has recently moved to New York City and experiencing all the cultural differences that I've highlighted many times and just kind of new and, and also younger, you know, like I'm always talking about from the perspective of somebody with a husband and kids and in this different stage of life. And like, what's it like moving abroad when you're younger, obviously in some ways a lot easier, but also kind of what it's like for a New Zealander to come into the States and especially on an election year and <laughs> all the fun things that come with everything that you experience. And then obviously New York City is going to be a culture in of itself and so big uh, compared to the cities in New Zealand. So I'm excited to have you. And we're just kind of dive into a conversation about what it's like and, um, you know, your experience so far. So why don't you just catch us all up on where you're from in New Zealand, how long you've been here, that sort of thing. Perfect. So yeah, uh, my name's Kiki. I grew up in Queenstown, South Island of New Zealand. Oh, I love Queenstown. Yeah, yeah, no, it's very lovely. Like, and um, I studied up in Wellington for a couple of years, and then coming to the end of my studies, was able to move over to the states on the J one visa, which is what most Australians and Kiwis come on. Um, okay. Yeah, uh, which gives me about a year of solid work in any for any industry that I want, as long as it's oh. aligned with what I've studied. Ah, and, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's, oh, that's kind cool. Of so a little idea. bit like the working holiday visa. Oh. It's pretty much the exact same. Pretty much the same. Okay, because I don't ever know. People are always asking me about the visas to come to the U.S., but I'm a citizen, so I don't have any idea. <laughs> yeah, it's very, very complicated depending on where you sit. And yeah, yeah. But the ones, the easiest ones for New Zealanders and Australians are for sure J1 visa, which you can get right after you finish studying or within your last like oh year. Gosh, well, people should be doing that. Yeah. I love that. That's your OE, overseas experience, if you guys don't know. <laughs> It's a very common thing in the culture of New Zealand. So yeah, cool. So that's kind of my background, I guess. If I'm not sure. And you've been there for how long? Oh yes. So I've um I've been here for about a month and a half now. So I moved twenty first of June, and today is the first of. Oh, oh wow. Okay. So not very long. Yeah, it's August first. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, no, I know the time frame. Anyway, um, okay, so where are you living in New York City? What do you think about New York City? Like, what are you doing for a job? Like, this is what everybody's dying to know. Perfect. So, living in New York City, um, I traveled and visited New York twice last year. Uh, I stayed in quite a few different places in the oh, city. Oh, okay. Lower East Village, Lower East Side, Brooklyn, mm. and then up into the Upper West Side. Mm. So I was able to travel and kind of check out a few different places. But now I'm living in Harlem, um, quite far south. So uh, closer to like the 116th station, if anyone knows where that mm. is on the west okay. side of Harlem. I don't. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's where I am. And yeah, uh, what was the other question? You're, well, you're, you're, where are you work? Are you working? Or are yeah, I'm you... working. Yes. So that's part of my J one visa. Is at the moment I'm trying to find um, a role, and I'm training at the moment at this place oh. called Sugar Monk, which is a amazing bar in Harlem. It's a speakeasy. It pays homage oh, cool. to jazz history. Yeah, of of the area. And on Monday nights they do this gorgeous, like, true to the industry prohibition era cocktails. Um, no. Fantastic. Yes. Okay, yeah. that's so cool. So I used to work for, you'll know it, Lulu's in Wellington. Yeah, Lulu's, yeah. yeah. So I used to work there, which is where I got my kind of bar thing set up. I finished my degree in communications. Okay. And so I'm trying to get into the hospitality scene here, doing public relations, communications, and starting out with these guys has been amazing for the Oh, cool. So far. Yep. So that is one thing that I've been finding interesting too, is the way that people job hunt here. And oh my gosh, yes, would be so different. Very different, very different. I feel like back at home, uh, going into somewhere and physically giving your CV is a dead art form. But here, it's pretty much the only way you can do it. And unless, if you're going for a more corporate role, unless you already have that network and a good connection, it's a full dead end. Yeah. Okay, so are you saying that going to physically go into a place in New York is necessary? That's what you're saying? I think yes, if oh. you're working something customer facing and 
you know, um, yes. hotelery, okay. that makes sense. those sorts of industries. Um, as for corporate roles and, you know, postgraduate roles, definitely, definitely there needs to be a network or a connection or some kind of sparkling, I don't know, highlighted thing in your resume to say, you know, right. make you stand out. Yeah, no, that's true. Like, but what I've noticed about the difference, I guess, and I'm only looking at professional jobs, but in the US, everything is just sent electronically. Whereas in New Zealand, like if you have to take people out for a coffee, you have to like, you know, it's just a little bit more. I noticed it kind of the opposite way. Like, yeah, but it makes sense in hospitality that like seeing your face and getting the just for you would make sense. Um, and interesting that that's the case in New York. And that's the thing. It's like to talk about America, people get mad at me all the time because I generalize. But like, otherwise, if I can't generalize anything, I can't say anything. <laughs> you know, obviously, yeah. I don't need to have disclaimers about everything. Like this doesn't apply everywhere. This isn't, do you know what I mean? So yeah. so that's so interesting. So let's actually, let's take a step back. Like what brought you, why, did, why New York City? Great question. Uh, literally, I... <laughs> This isn't going to sound great, but I've always, you know, coming from New Zealand, and I'm sure you've probably experienced it, I know I've got friends from the States living in New Zealand, there is not a particularly good reputation of the United States when you grow up somewhere like New Zealand. Um, and I don't know specifically after actually even living here for a month and a half if those differences are that extreme mm. or that reputation to be so bad. But mm. I didn't actually really want to be here. It wasn't mm. until I came and visited my friends and I immediately loved New York City that I was like, mm. okay, I have to come live here. Like immediately within a few days, I was just thinking to myself, I can't believe that I was so, I don't know, hesitant and reluctant to even visit because I had all this negative kind of perception about being in the States oh, to immediately just being like, I love it. It's amazing. Um, I think it's been so far, the people are lovely. New Yorkers are- Really? really That's what you're going to say. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> everyone has laughed at me for this, but I find everyone is super charismatic and look you in the eye and chatty. Um, yeah, I that will do. With New Zealanders is we are definitely a little bit more reserved. We're a reserved, more yes. More conversations. Um, and especially with strangers, but here it's not the case. No, at all. everybody will talk to you and look at you. And are you struggling with the accent? Because the accent in New York is quite strong. Uh, not so much. I think it's a, one of the benefits of being exposed to American media is that I can oh, okay, pretty much cool. hear things quite easily. Okay. Oh my gosh. But you have had to see crazy things. You've had to have had some sort of like mm -hmm. crazy experience on public transport or something. <laughs> Oh yeah, no, absolutely. Even the first two weeks that we were uh, that I got here, I was um, at a club. I was at Park Slope in mm -hmm. Brooklyn. I mean, relatively safe area. I was with someone who was also a New York native and someone who had lived here on and off for about ten years. Oh, okay. And we were feeling very safe at about one a.m. All girls to grab the subway from where we were and come back up here. And this guy ended up yelling at us. He ended up um, screaming at my friend to show her his, you no, know, show him her phone and play a song and started playing, you know, I heard Jesus lost his mind on a night out. And then gets on the ground, starts doing push ups, starts saying that if we don't play the song, he'll like wild out and fight us ends up following us on the train and like drawing lines on his arm with mascara and it wasn't until this guy ended up like catching our eye being like are you okay and we went no he came over and really? kind of helped us out and just made sure that we were safe got the guy to stop talking to us eventually after a couple stops the crazy guy got bored and just left us alone but definitely crazy and it was also interesting because being with two people who are so familiar with the city they said that, you know, that was very unexpected and neither of them had really ever had an experience like that before. So, mm, yeah. Well, did they take the train at 1 a.m. normally? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, on a weekend with friends, definitely not abnormal for them to kind of do something yeah, like that's that. Yeah, that's true. And also, you know, they are of the mindset that generally if you're with a group of people and you don't give people the time of day, Right. They leave you alone, leave but you in alone. this circumstance, okay. he just kept going and going and going. So that was a crazy experience. Right. Still Hopefully one, one off. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. 
how like how, so I mean if you're in Harlem like how safe do you feel like the city is I mean I even my clients that I help move to New Zealand from New York are like don't come to the city it's crazy now you know so you do always hear that because well they're coming from a reference point of what it used to be to what it is now right so that could be different um and you wouldn't know that but I think that you can feel the energy shift very quickly mm. um block to block like you switch mm. side, like you go to the other side of the road and you Wait. can immediately feel if it's a little bit less unsafe um mm. I think so far that my experience here I live in a much safer area of Harlem mm. for sure okay like there's quite a few kids areas around here I'm seeing kids throughout the day playing alone on the street kind of thing um it's also very busy so I don't feel unsafe here it, there's quite a lot of nightlife around. Um, mm. I do know that I wouldn't really want to go too far down any one street by mm. myself at night. Right. But I'm also not doing that. You know, it's just making sure you're taking those safety precautions that you would anywhere else in the world. Right. Um, and definitely just being more aware that the people here you can't actually really tell if someone has good or bad intentions until mm. you interact with them. Mm. And it's better to just not interact with anyone until you're Got somewhere it. safe. Oh, these are all such good tips. I love it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, okay. So, okay. I mean, New York has got to seem so big. Oh yeah. Compared oh, yeah. to New Zealand. <laughs> uh, 4 million and just Manhattan alone versus 5 million in our whole country. Our biggest city with just a little over a million. It's absolutely wild. It, it, it ends up almost feeling, I suppose it almost feels a bit smaller because your community kind of mm. counts. Um, oh, that's yeah. true. Oh, yeah, I think my social circles become, I mean, I'm still in the process of making friends and finding right. out. Like you're very new. So very new, I'm impressed you yeah. even have a social circle. <laughs> so <laughs> that's another thing is I'm actually dating someone from the States who oh, is living okay. in New York. Um, okay. And we met on our, on my trip uh, last year when I was here. But um, yes, that is something I've even noticed in her friend groups is that everything is quite compounded. Once you know someone in one group, you kind of know everyone in that group. Oh, that's cool. Sort of yeah, um, that makes sense. Well, yeah, do you I like her friends? I mean, that's the question, right? <laughs> yes, yes, they're all very, very. I guess they're being recorded. You have to say that, so <laughs> we can edit out anything bad. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> very, very lovely. Um, but yeah, no, it seems. I, I guess she did go to school here as well, and so that definitely helps with broadening it for me. I've already noticed it in the hospitality community, uh, or at least around here. That oh, true. Get to know each other. And that that community here is quite tight, especially as you branch into special like specialities. Like if you're a jazz bar, rum bar, tequila bar. Oh, kind of really? Okay. I know mm -hmm. the, speci the specialization will be really obvious, I think, to a, a New Zealander because it's not like that there. It's like, oh, you kind of got this skill. You can do the job, <laughs> you know, yes. because there's not that many people to do things. So mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so that's very, very interesting. Um, okay. So that's cool that you're getting settled. Um, yeah, I mean, it has got to feel so big, but like, so let's highlight some of the cultural differences for you, because I think that that's probably the most interesting. Yeah. I've, I've found some really, really crazy, like cultural differences so far. Um, and one thing that I know, because we were talking before saying that I've studied linguistics was my minor is that oftentimes you can feel the most extreme cultural differences in cultures that are more adjacent to yours rather than further away from yours. So for me, I'm feeling really? what's likely to be a, a stronger, I forgot, is, is it just cultural difference? Um, yeah, I suppose just cultural difference between being here than I probably would if I went to somewhere like Thailand. Hmm. And it's because if I was going to somewhere like Thailand, I would be expecting all these changes and I would be looking to figure it out. And I would also have a lot more uh, like lenience, I suppose, from locals who would understand I'm not from there and would give me those kind of breaks if I was breaking social norms. Whereas here, yeah. So whereas here, um, I'm expected to know the social norms more, 
even when I don't know them, people kind of kind of check me a little bit and in a way that's like, you know, why don't you know this? It's not so much rude, but it's a little bit more of like a, it should be normal to me, but it's not because I didn't grow up here. Oh my gosh. And there's things like as simple as, I don't know, a deli order, ordering something yeah. at a dairy a or process. a deli here. Right. <laughs> yes. There is a process and right. it's something that I'm slowly figuring out. I have my daily order down and I don't think I'll ever change it because I'm too scared to relearn that whole process. Oh my gosh. I'm going to need to know this deli order thing. I know it's going to be, yeah. Cause they look at you. That is okay. This is the most insightful thing that I have heard in a while, to be honest, like that is really interesting. How have I not come across this? Like I'm a communications person. I haven't studied linguistics in particular, but like, Okay, so like it feels more of a cultural difference when you go to something that's more similar to you because people, because I guess like if you go to Thailand, you just look different. So yeah. like physically, so they know that you're not from there or whatever, like if you went to an Asian country or whatever. So that's so interesting because that is so true because you come in and it's like nobody trains you. Nobody is like, this is how you handle this situation and this situation. I mean, that was my experience in New Zealand. Like people just talk to you like you should know this. Yes. And, okay. And you just feel really dumb, just constantly like, I don't know what you're saying. It's a different kind of cultural shock that you just, yeah, you really yeah. don't experience in other places. And I've had it, I've traveled quite a few places. I've traveled to the UK um, through a fair bit of Europe and Oh, okay. in London, it was a little bit different having that sort of cultural shock hmm. and figuring out what that meant. But definitely here, it's been particularly large. I think I actually, I couldn't tell you why I think exactly it is, but I definitely notice things even with your daily greetings as simple as, hey, how are you doing today versus how it would be at home, which is definitely less exuberant and enthusiastic. Um yeah, no, it, it's, hmm, it's that's interesting. interesting. Okay. Okay. That is just, I just, I'm just like, the, oh my gosh. Like, I wish I would have kind of thought about that when I was moving. Yeah. Like, that's what was hard is like, no, nobody, I don't even know how to ask how it would be different. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was really good. I think one good example would be um, checks. So uh, like when you're game? paying for something at a restaurant. Yeah. So of course we don't have checks back at home. Oh, and checks. I was, yes, oh. checks, checks and bills. Okay, checks. Yep. Oh, oh gosh, can you imagine you have to deal with checks? Yes, which is a whole new thing to me. I've never ever touched a, a bill or a check in my life, and so for me, I'm learning the entire um, like etiquette system for picking up someone's check at the table. So I've learned recently that if someone has money oh. on their check and you've gone to return it. You can't take it again until like they've left. Uh -huh. It's rude to pick up a check from the table if they've left money on it, unless they've already left. Already left. Yes. Oh, no, that's true. So that's you don't even I know what's a cultural thing. <laughs> I don't even know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I don't even know that that's something that I shouldn't do. And so I've been asking these really silly questions uh, while I've been training that, yeah. Um, yeah, the the people around me have to go, what, like, what do you mean? And I have to remind them, we don't have checks at home. I just want to make sure I'm not doing something embarrassing or rude. And they're like, oh, of course, leave it there. Got it. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because even when we moved back here, my kid, my older kids, like they, I'm like, just write them a check. And they're like, we don't know what you're saying. Yeah. Like my older kids have no idea how to write a check. I'm like, oh my gosh, do I got to train you how to do this? They're like, this is so annoying. Why would I? And they're like, just move it into their bank account. And I'm like, <laughs> Sorry, sorry, no, I mean in hospitality. Excuse me. And like um in serving and restaurants. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. Like when I went to buy a car, I just paid with a check. And she was like, just put it in her account. What are you writing that? What is that? There's another one, is I didn't know what you meant there either. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> it's perfect. It's, it's perfect. perfect. Yes. Yeah. I just, I'm saying that my children who grew up in New Zealand have no idea what a check is either and yeah. how to write it. And I pull it out. It looked like a foreign object. They're like, I'm not writing that. Why would I do that piece of paper? That's weird. And then you like take a picture of it, upload it into your account. And I'm like, I know. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's just <laughs> things like that. Or even, um, 
other cultural things for me is the work and culture here. Uh, oh, yeah. Let's talk about that. Be, it seems to be a lot better here. I prefer it in the States than I do to back at home. I think back at home, yeah. we do have that tall poppy syndrome and we do have a large degree of, um, I, I think it's work ethic that comes from a pretty negative place. Yes, that if thank you. If you're not being productive, you're being lazy. And that's not something I've seen here. So far, what I've seen here is that if someone isn't doing something in their role, it's mm -hmm. because they have nothing to do. And a manager trusts that they don't have anything to do mm -hmm. rather than believing that they're slacking oh. off. Really? Or at least that's what I've noticed. Yeah, in your experience, so right, in your in experience. experience so far. And cool. of course, it is like a major generalization. I know I have spoken to people who grew up here who have said that in in like larger corporations, it's not like that. You definitely will have someone kind of breathing down your neck, snapping at you That's to say, true. get to work, stop standing around. But um, in smaller businesses, it right. definitely isn't like that from what I've isn't seen like so that. far. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. And also, I mean, you haven't been here long enough. So wait till yes. you try to have a day off or a vacation. <laughs> And that's another thing too, is that um, the corporate world is, is a whole different beast. Like mm. um, my girlfriend working and what she does, mm. she puts in a lot more hours than I ever would be expected to at home. Totally. With, okay. You know, so you know that. time off, uh, paid time off associated with it. Of mm -hmm. course, at home you get four weeks paid time off. Generally, you're going to get Christmas, all of that as well on top of it. Um, and you it's okay to start at nine o'clock and finish at five o'clock on the dot you don't need to stay longer no one really expects you to either right and here it's definitely you are expected to get it done if you need to right um but yeah I think I I, I actually I'm going to take back saying that I prefer it here I will say that there are differences and I think each has the benefits and their disadvantages of course agreed yeah. but yeah it is it is different and I was even watching my kids go and work in New Zealand and having kind of that, like, well, it's five and we're closing the door and I'm done. And like, as an American, that feels so weird. Like you always finish your customer service, you finish what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, and like, I'm doing, I've been doing contract work for people in New Zealand and like, they don't understand. They're like, why are you charging for your extra time? And I'm like, because I don't know, like my work ethic is I, you know, if it's not the way you want it, then I'm going to finish it and you know, work on it until it's up to what you're expecting, right? Because you've hired me to do this. And it's just, it's a different, it's a different mindset. And it's just, it just, that kind of makes me laugh, but. Yeah, um, definitely different mindsets. And I also think different end goals as well. Mm, um, the end goal huge. here is, is much more scaled towards the American dream. Um, yep. People really do want that a lot more than they do at home. Whereas at home, I think it's more scaled towards you know, owning your own property, owning your own place and family and having a family, but I think also towards mm -hmm. travel as well. Yeah. Um, travel and more being able to have time off comfortably. Yes. People here kind of want to be able to get away for the weekend in their nice truck and go fishing, go swimming, go hiking. Uh, that doesn't seem to be as much the case here as people just want to spend time with their families. Yeah, like the focus isn't the, the work just has a, a much higher priority, and they just don't have, they don't live in a culture where they're expecting a lot of time off, you know. And it just you just when you grow up into that, you don't realize that other people experience it differently, <laughs> you know. Like in New Zealand or in lots of Europe, you know, they get tons of time off, and and that's just not we're not used to that so like when we would come here and we would visit from new zealand to the u.s like they're like how do you get off for three weeks every year <laughs> you know like that's kind of unheard of you know or when i have americans that are visiting and they're like what well, can i see in 10 days and it's like not a lot <laughs> yes yes so. it is that definitely is a pretty major difference and something that i haven't experienced yet um because I am working towards that hospitality industry. But if I do get into PR, I'm sure that's something that will come up. Yes, yes, it will. And yeah, I mean, I think that what you're experiencing, and this is something that was a realization for me, just from like doing this channel and having community and people constantly telling me this is true or not true, but that like the Commonwealth countries 
you know, they have kind of like a, 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 a similar rate, you know, the way that they do things, the way that they describe something, the way that they talk about something, a lot of the values are the same, not completely, but like America really is the odd one out. They really are quite different. Yes, they yeah, think absolutely. differently. They have the, all the different words. They have the different numbers, the different temperature, the di you know, the way they do yeah. everything is different. And so I think that that probably makes it really hard and people don't always realize that. I think, I think that's actually probably a really good, no, I think that's a really good observation. It's something that I've noticed as well, speaking with people living here who are from places like the UK or Ireland, Scotland, Australia. Yeah. Uh, my rapport with them is a lot more natural. Natural, yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, interesting. Not to say that it's bad with Americans, but it's it does take me a moment to adjust, I suppose, mm. um, and figure out the flow and kind of figure out, I mean, you know, banter is such a big thing at home uh, and that banter right. tends to be a little bit more on the negative side. And so right. even playing with where that level is here has been interesting but it, it seems to not be that different yeah and it know. depends if they're they have a sense of humor or not or they're gonna yeah, exactly. think that you're literal about everything you're yeah. saying you know I've noticed that a bit too so that's cool yeah. I um, think um, Americans have quite sing-songy accents as well um oh. and so yeah not oh no 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 I'm thinking wrong I'm thinking the wrong thing um but in different ways that Americans kind of speak about different things, it might just be a New York thing as well. Mm. Yeah, I don't but know. The tone tends to come across a little bit more clearly. If you're joking, you're like very clearly. Joking. Oh, interesting. Or at least that's something I might just be noticing for myself. Yeah, because I when I went to New Zealand, everybody talks so fast for one. And they're and, you know, they don't pronounce very well. And so like, I don't, everything is like running together. They're going really fast. And I'm like, whoa, what are they trying to say? Are they being serious? Is that a joke? You know, and there's so many nuances in New Zealand culture and you, you think you understand it. You're there a year, you're there two years. You don't understand it. <laughs> I was there 10 years and I, what I thought in the beginning is not what I thought at the end. <laughs> yes yeah and I'm looking forward to to experiencing that for myself mm -hmm. as well and definitely these things that I've been noticing I'm taking for the fact that I have only been here for a month and a half so far yeah. and that these will absolutely change over time and totally. will probably become a lot less you know, as I start to kind of categorize things more and understand them more well how they work. what's good for you is that you're in the states and you're in New York City and so the, one of the big difference in communication is that they're going to be straightforward. You're going to know what they think about something. And sometimes yes. that's hard to take because it's very straightforward. You know, um, New Zealanders aren't like that. And that's not a bad thing in a lot of cases because they just are very nice. But what you don't realize until you've been there a long time is that there is a lot of thought and opinion underneath what they're saying. <laughs> yes and it's hard to read that I have I can't quite read that very well yet I have noticed it as well like you said we're coming into an election year we're in an election year here yeah. and so um that of course has been topic of conversation um and mm -hmm. in, in the circles I've been around and there have been times where I've sort of made a bit of a personal statement or made kind of like my own sort of opinion clear and I think mm. because with Americans, you do have an opinion under what you say that mine has been taken maybe too literally or too generalized. Mm. And people have gone like, hang on a second, like, what do, you, what do you mean? And said, you know, no, no, no. And I've been thinking to myself, what did I do wrong here? <laughs> like, you know, what did I say wrong that came across to have- Right, because they will be straightforward with you. Like, well, what do you yeah. mean by that? And well, I, I'm like, the, I'm offended by that. Like, they would say yeah. that to you. Like, a New Zealander yeah, would just be like- so much on the, on the offense side, but definitely more on the almost be careful what you say next side. Uh, yeah, and that's honestly, that's that's within the silo of politics. I mean, yeah. the way that someone can and is allowed to talk about politics is completely different than so many other subjects. So, so different to, to New Zealand as well. Just extremely different to how it's done in New Zealand. I think, um, I don't know, I, I don't think we hold it as closely to our personal lives. Totally, yeah. So what are you noticing to be different? That's exactly what I would say. Oh, uh, yeah, um, definitely your political leaning here 
has a lot to do with how you see yourself as a person and your moral values and I, I, I guess yeah um the way you see yourself and the way you see the people around you whereas at home I think we are unfortunately kind of going that direction mm -hmm. but it's definitely more separate people don't really see themselves you know as in, you know I'm a national supporter through and through right I rip the nets to the day I die kind of right. thing or I'm a labor supporter like it doesn't really happen like that at home um well there's seven parties or plus you know so that's why exactly, exactly. <laughs> we don't have a two-party system yeah this whole um, this gap is so large and yeah. people just, yeah, they've just put their personalness, their religion, their like everything is associated. I'm really struggling myself because, you know, if you don't line yourself with someone, somebody's offended no matter what I do. And yeah. it's just like, I'm like, okay. <laughs> it is, yeah, yeah. It is interesting seeing how that actually plays out in real time. I mean, of course we, we are exposed to it online. Um, and it hasn't right. really, you know, been such a massive part of my experience here, but it has been interesting to see how people discuss it. And it's topics that I try to stay out of because I don't have the the knowledge fair. to really That's fair. anything. But um, yeah, definitely the way that people talk about it and how people align themselves with their political leaning and ideologies it has a lot more importance than I think it does back at home. Oh, a hundred percent. So I'm interested to see how this goes for you. I have noticed it being not as bad as I remembered it when I left. So um, it's been, I mean, but it's also kind of ramping up as well. And so I'm definitely hearing a lot more and like, you know, like people, like you could like have a really good friend or a really close family member. Like you really, you know, really connect and you're really the same and like, you really love each other. And then like, you'll say, well, I'm voting for Kamala or Trump or whoever. And you're like, it's like, it's immediately, that's a problem. And it's yeah. like, are you kidding me? Like, yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, why is who you value as me? Like, like, why does that matter? Do you know what I mean? Like they just, it's so, but it's, and it's so important to them. And I'm like, holy cow. <laughs> it's yeah, no, it definitely is very like, yeah, like exactly. That's a great example is back at home you might spark up a little bit of a political debate it could get a little bit heated you might end up you know a little bit really, right it's nothing the same yeah, it's just not the same at all yeah have you been to any like sporting events in the U.S. I wonder if that's not different yet. For you. I'm really excited to I would really love to see a NFL game I watched the Super Bowl last year and was it last year the yeah, you'll recent. have to go see a Jets game or a Giants game or... Right, I'll have to keep it in mind. No, I would love to go see sports. I would love to go see baseball. I went and uh, watched some people playing baseball for fun in Central Park uh, the last oh, week. Oh, nice. Which I loved. Um, I felt very, you know, foam finger waving around. Um, USA, USA, but <laughs> it was super cool. <laughs> um, but no, cool. no, I definitely want to check out some sports while I'm here. I felt like the sports in New Zealand were so downplayed when I went to sporting events. It was very disappointing. It was like, <laughs> I'm at an all blacks game and we are cheering, cheering, cheering. And they just lost, like barely lost, which, you know, doesn't happen a lot. And they lost. And we were like, and everybody was like, oh, okay, let's go get a beer, you know, like, and like just walking away. And I, I'm like, oh, I'm like <laughs> devastated, you know? I mean, literally within the next 30 seconds, everybody's fine and talking normal. And I'm just like, that is not what you're going to experience. I can't wait for it. I cannot wait. If the team I loses, that... it's, all, it's all, they're very upset. And it's not that it's right or good that it affects them emotionally, but it's just different. They're just competitive. Oh, I mean, it's, I guess it's identity and community here also has it's on oh, that's true. culture than it does mm. back at home as well. And yeah. so identifying mm. with your city, your state, your team is so much bigger than back at home. I mean, at home, we so much have bigger. All blacks. We have the all blacks right. as a collective. As a and you might, you know, sure. I go for the hurricanes, I go for the Highlanders as well. Yep, the Highlanders, um, yep. But I'm not, you know, I don't have any posters on my wall. Right. It's not, yeah, that's true. It's not quite the same. It's true. And I wonder if that's why my kids also didn't, they, even though we live for so long in New Zealand that they just didn't really pick up New Zealand sports. Like they still watched American sports because there's still like this connection, this, 
you know, this enthusiasm um, for the team that's home. I don't know. I'm that's just fun. I love about. it. Personally, I'm a big fan of the um, American enthusiasm. Yeah. It's, Are you? It, it, <laughs> yeah. It brings a lot of joy to me. Um, yeah, no, it's just uh, when people are supporting each other here, it's all bells and whistles and very loud and very proud. And I think it's very, very cool. Where again, oh, that's cool. it's much more of a tall poppy syndrome. And yeah. I think people are always a little bit scared to be above the crowd or even to have other people push them there. Um, hmm, yeah, that's true. Oh yeah, we don't have anything like that. And for you guys that don't know what a tall poppy syndrome is, tall poppy is like is like if you if everybody is like at the same level and someone pops up, we want to cut them down. We don't want them to be better. Yep. <laughs> yep. And it yeah. Um here I can definitely see that people are much more confident talking about themselves in positive ways. Oh, totally. <laughs> totally that has been something I'm trying very hard to overcome as a classic Kiwi again tall poppy syndrome the art of cutting yourself down to match everyone else's level yeah is the art of talking about myself badly um mm -hmm. to make sure that I'm not being too cocky or totally thinking I'm too cool uh because that's definitely how we see it back at home is yeah, so introductions crazy. have got to be really different for you because everybody says who they are and like what they do for a living like that's it and I was like that's not what you do in New Zealand <laughs> nobody talks about like what they do for a living or no. you know, nobody cares and I've I'm very extroverted always been super chatty worked in tourism so those are the questions that I've always asked Sometimes people get a little bit confused back at home if I'm asking strangers, you know, like, oh, hey, you know, what do you do here? That kind of thing. They might get a little bit like, what do you mean? What do I do? And I have to clarify for work. Um, yeah, oh, 100%. It's, it's very natural. And I have actually noticed that people are a lot more willing to kind of actually talk about themselves. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Do you get the, where is New Zealand? Do they get, no. oh, you're from Australia? Yes. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> People have thought I'm from Australia quite a lot. Okay. I yeah. don't mind it. No, it's fine. People, it's when like they it. tell me they can't tell the difference between America, uh, sorry, between New Zealand and Australian accents, I say, I understand. I can't tell the difference between American and Canadian accents. Oh, there you go. I like that answer. And they go, oh, I see. And I'm like, yes. And they're like, Canada, we don't really know that they exist. We don't even acknowledge them. <laughs> It's quite funny because some people go, what do you mean you can't tell the difference? They're so different. They're completely different accents. Right. I'm like, same to me. That was the same to me. Okay. That's so funny. Um, is it weird that there's no kettle in like every room? I've got them here. I've got one here. You've Thank got you. one here. Okay. I bought one too, because my kids literally don't know how to function without it. So good. Good. <laughs> That's great to hear. No, I live with an Australian. I'm actually not sure if it's his or not, but yeah, no, we've got one here. Thank you. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Because just so you know, that's how Australians and New Zealanders boil water. They don't put it in the microwave or boil it in a pan. I guess that's just shocking to me. Okay. One, in microwave. one other thing I wanted to ask you, because you're 25 and, you know, I've heard this a lot in comments. I've experienced it a bit. Um, is people always say like, don't go to New Zealand. It's so boring. Like, do you find like it's boring compared? I mean, obviously you grew up there, you know, people. And so then that makes it not boring, but like, especially if you like, if you're new and you don't know anybody and you're 25 and New Zealand, like can come across quite boring compared to New York city or with just so much to do all the time. Yeah. I don't know. I think I think if you're someone who always has to have something to do at every second of the day, you can mm. make that work for you anywhere in the world. I don't mm. think it is actually secluded to being big city things. Um, yeah. I do think that back at home, you have to slow down the pace because there isn't that much to do that is set up. Yeah, um, sure. But I don't know. Um, I don't think New Zealand's boring. I, again, grew up in Queenstown, though, and spent a lot of time sure. in Wellington, and I do like being outside. So for me, I find the most joy just getting out into the mountains or, I don't know, reading, spending time with family and friends. And right, I because that's all you know, right? Yeah. I'm just saying when people are coming from here and they're used to, like, things to do constantly and just, like, always something. Like, here, I'm, I'm finding it, like, I'm exhausted, like... 
there's this festival, there's four festivals last weekend, and now state fair is starting today. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, I'm not ready for all this. <laughs> the way that I think of it is that you don't have to do it. No, like, I know. And it would, but that's that's the way that I've been thinking because there's constantly something happening around me. Yeah. It's just be. all the time. There is something happening. There's something I could go to. There's an event. There's a street fair. There's someone I can hang out with at any moment. And at first I was feeling a little bit bad about it that I wasn't going out and experiencing it all. Mm. And now I'm kind of just thinking to myself, I don't really need to. All right. I really want to do is hang out with my friends right. and go see the things I'm really desperate to see. But um, mm. if I'm stumbling onto something, to me, that's a lot more fun than kind of really planning it. into the my planning schedule. it. Agreed. Yeah. Totally. I love the last minute kind of stuff. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for joining us. I, this was really great. Um, your perspective. I mean, I have, I have a lot to uh, think about when you're talking about your cultural shock with countries that are like the same. So I love that. I so appreciate you sharing that. And we'll have to catch up again after you've been there for a while and to see how things changed and <laughs> what you're yeah, thinking of it sure. at that point, or, you know, after the election, maybe something yes. like that. So. I'm sure I'll have a lot more to give. I've got some uh, corporate opportunities coming up pretty soon, hopefully. So, oh, I'll that's give great. That a few months, and um, yeah. I can give you some more opinions as I settle in more. Yeah, no, this is so great. And if you guys have questions, just post them in the comments. Um, and then you, I'm happy for you to go in and respond. Or, um, because like, yeah, because I'm noticing like when I'm bringing people on, they're really enjoying like responding. Like people have questions, and it's how they're taking what you're saying. And I think that's really helpful. And I think it's really encouraging that if you're done with college, to go get this visa, to have an experience in the U.S. Um, and move there and and do that. So post your questions if you have those for Kiki. And thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.